All right, now, case two is the complement of case one. Whenever you take a maximum antichain, at least one of down from A and up from A is empty. And now this case is, is quite easy. Choose any maximal element. Choose any maximal element, say Y. Then choose a minimal element with X less equal to Y. So you take your maximal element in the post set and you just start walking down until you run out of gas and you reach some point which is a minimal element. You, you must get there, it's finite. Take this element away and that element away. Okay, if they're distinct, that's a two element chain. Well, it, it could be, you start with a maximal element, it's also a, a minimal element, it's, in which case you take away one. But here's the important thing. When you take x and y away, regardless of whether x equals y or x is different from y, in what's left, there is no maximum antichain of size w. If there were, x would be on the high side and y would be on the low side. And you've already ruled that out. There is no such antichain. So when you took away x and y, the width has gone down. You partition what's left into w minus 1 chains and then put x, y, whether again, depending on whether or not it's chain size 1 or 2, back on and you have everything. End of proof. Whew. Now, it will probably take you a couple of days to digest that explanation. But from an applied standpoint, the part that I hope comes through very clearly is, yes, it does get the job done. It does prove Dilworth's theorem. But it doesn't give you a clue how to implement it. Unlike, completely unlike the dual version, the dual version had explicitly a method recursively strip off the minimal elements. There is no method in this argument whatsoever. The cases are about whether or not something exists without any emphasis on how one actually finds it, puts their hands on it. So I'm hoping that after you reflect on this, you will agree with the two notions. Dilworth's theorem is true. A post set of width W can be partitioned into W chains. And two, you have not a clue as to how to do it. Not a clue. Question. For case two, are X and Y both elements of the anti-chain A and an arbitrary anti-chain? No, they're, they're certainly not. We're talking about the anti-chain, the width when you remove them, and that width will go down. That's what distinguishes case one from case two. Case one, I take this anti-chain, and there's something up here and there's something down here. In case two, there isn't such an anti-chain. So that means when I take a maximal element and a minimal element that's less equal and pull those away, you can't find a, an anti-chain of the same size. The width has gone down. That means they're the same element, not just that they have the same value, but they're the same element? Yeah, so is, listen to the sentence. Choose a maximal element y, any one. Trace it on down to a minimal element. It may not trace at all. It may just sit right there. And that can happen when, this, when you have a post set where you got a loose point. A loose point would then be an element which is both a maximal element and the minimal element. When you take away that loose point, the width goes down. <laughs> 